Ahoy, mateys! We have a right treasure for you today. If you're a fan of gorgeous art, pirate tales, magic, or dang good co-op fun, then you're definitely going to want to hear about Curse of the Sea Rat. While on the surface, the game might look like just another side-scrolling 2D platformer, it is actually quite a bit more than that. For starters, it supports up to four players, and while that's not incredibly rare in games, it's a big step up in our book. For another thing, the game is lovingly hand-drawn and is straight up gorgeous. Their website calls it 2.5D, and I would say that is not an exaggeration. The background is enthralling and engaging, and the foreground, where you spend your time, is crisp, colorful, and a delight for the eyes. The game's website mentions Don Bluth and Disney as examples of what their game aspires to look like. And I think they hit the mark, as Disney fans, we felt right at home. There are four playable characters, each with their own unique backstory, fighting style, and gorgeous design. There's just something about animals made to look like humans that is just so enthralling. It's amazing how they make animals so relatable. A anyway, each character has their own strengths and weaknesses. And as you level up, you can unlock special skills, improve abilities, increase your offense and defense, and learn magic. The story begins in 1777, shipwrecked on an island in Ireland. If that simple sentence didn't get you invested, then I don't know what will. You play as prisoners of the British Empire soon to be sentenced to death. After everyone on the ship was transformed into rats by the evil pirate witch Flora Byrne, who also kidnapped the captain's son, you are offered freedom in exchange for rescuing the boy. As I said earlier, it's not simply a 2D platformer, it is a Metroidvania, meaning that it's non-linear, so you can go and do whatever you want whenever you want. You don't just move left to right, you go back and forth, up and down to find secret rooms, special items, and multiple ways to get from point A to point B. We were greatly surprised by the breadth of the map and how easily we could get lost. We were constantly finding new areas with different ways that loops back and forth to where we had been previously. The developers claim that there will be a full 12 hours of gameplay within the main quest as you seek to capture Flora Burn and resume your human form. The website also mentions puzzles to solve and multiple multiple endings to discover. There's a ton of fighting with different enemies to learn about, like this one exploding chicken that killed Carly like five times. My dad. <laughs> Blowing up <laughs> turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention difficult bosses who will keep you on your toes. The demo was a little bit difficult for us, especially that first boss, so hopefully there will be some difficulty settings to fiddle with when the game actually releases. But we're ecstatic either way. The co-op experience felt and looked great. You do share food, potions, and items, as well as upgrade tokens, so you need to talk about what you're using and be careful not to become the hog of the group. But this might just encourage more communication, strategy, and cooperation. No player seems to be more in control than any other, and reviving each other is a simple matter of swiping at their ghost, similar to new Super Mario Bros. However, you do come back with pretty low health, so you need to be careful not to pop them right into danger. If you have a hankering for more new exciting co-op games, click right here for all of your hopes and dreams to come true. Well, hopefully. We take no legal liability if that does not come true. We love you guys. Y'all are awesome.